focus. Hey folks, this is Io Ether, and we're back with some more World Tanks. So as you can see, this is Ronic in the STB1. This is a tier 10 game on Redshire. And, um, yeah. So, before we actually jump into the game, of course, if you like the video, please do hit that like button. It really does help me out quite a bit. And if you dislike it, then hit the dislike button. That'll happen too. Um, so, yeah, that is that. Um... If you do want to be one of our heroes, then go ahead and send me an email. Uh, IOT. IOTV? IOether. Wow, amazingly, apparently I can't say my own email address. IOETHERTV at gmail.com. Um, all lowercase, all one word. And if you don't know how to spell IOether, then just look at the. <laughs> Look at the YouTube channel page. Um, also, there's a video about it if uh, you want to send me an email. So, jumping into the actual game, now that I've stopped fumbling words, uh, we're gonna look at free shots on enemy tanks. Uh, unfortunately, not able to plant one into the, the I-7 until there. I thought it was it was gonna be too late to plant one into the I-7. Planting one into the E-100. That poor guy. These guys are taking damage before they even get to their stations. It's gotta piss them off. And our WZ uh, is in a great position. Ooh, unfortunately, not paying the T-54 lightweight. Of course, it doesn't really matter when the rest of our team pens. Wait, just... Why do we have an E-5 up here? Okay, well, first off, thank you. That explains why we have an E5 up here. A little bit. Uh, so, instead of being over there with heavy tanks where E5 should be, he's in fact up here uh, sniping. So this is not going to go well for our heavy tanks. Uh, there's two versus four. Yeah, those odds are not going to go well. Now we do have an E100 over there, so that is kind of... The, the saving grace. Uh, albeit the enemy team has an E100 over there as well, but between the E100 and the 215B, uh, those guys should be able to hold up for at least a little while. Their problem is going to be artillery more than anything. If the enemy pushes up, they're going to uh, take some heavy damage for uh, securing that flank. However, that's only if our artillery doesn't get it stuck in really well. IS-8 charging and just flanking the fire. Now the IS-8 is going to die here. The problem is we lose this flank because of the fact that E-100 now has to fight from every side. Our E-100 is just about to die. But hopefully he does enough damage that we can take one of them with him. Um, I don't think firing into the front at E-100 is going to do anything. The side of the turret on E-5, though, definitely worth a shot. We get lit. That's not great. And Rock is going to stick around here for at least one more shot. He might even stick around for the kill on the T-57. Yep, there we go. Kill number one. Good job. And we can't really see the lower base on the E-100. Can't see a whole lot of the E-100. And if that turret would turn just a little bit more to the side, that'd be great. Ronick taking a shot there at the, um, the little bar up on top of the turret. I don't remember what part of the tank that is. Um, I want to say range fire, but I don't think that's right. Ooh, the side of a turret! Oh, didn't quite get that shot on the side of the turret. And the E-100's got his turret faced at that point in time at a decent enough angle that we were just going to balance. Fighting, shooting at the 100 at this angle is not worth your time. You're more than likely to mount every single time. But if he's going to turn aside his turret and you can hit it, that's definitely worth shooting at. That's not worth shooting at. Okay, so upside is the enemy push is pretty much dead on that side. Downside is we only have. Seven tanks left. Six? Seven. Seven tanks left, including art an artillery. So, that's not great. 
Um, do manage to take out the enemy E100. Yeah, that evens the scores back up. But we are surrounded and outflanked. And there's a T68 to a firing into us. Brock tries to return fire, does not connect his shot, and now he's going to take a beat from the E75 e here. Why there's an E75 up here again, I don't know. But I don't know. He was facing off with our E, our E5, I guess. Still taking shots from the T62A, but we do manage to take out the E75. So that's one more threat gone. The T62A2A is taking a pounding from somewhere. And I think that was actually some of the artillery that was hitting him. Now he's taking shots from the two. Uh, I want to say medium tanks. They are both medium tanks. Why did I think one was a light tank? But uh, now, little wolf pack of medium surrounding this guy and takes him out. Unfortunately, we did take another shot from him. So, Ronic is down to less than 500 health. There's full health E3 right here. There's an IS-7 on mostly full health. That last we saw him, yep, way over there. And there's an E1 pushing up the other side of the map. Now, technically, we're winning this game. But... I think the enemy has more health than us. Yeah, it's pretty close. You can actually see the health right here. So right now we are now losing this game in health. It's it's gonna be a close game, one way or the other. Ronick has managed to track the E3 with nobody in front of him. So uh, if you keep just retracking this guy every time he reloads, then he should have a dead E3 on his hands. That was an arty shot on the E3 that missed by about 20 feet straight up. Um, that is the dead E3. Now we have found the E1 who is rushing to the aid of this E3 comrade. Unfortunately for him, uh, he got here way too late. Unfortunately for us, we bounced our first shot. And now we have 19 health. Lovely. Just lovely. It means Rana can't take a single shot from the E1. He needs to bait him out, make him uh, pull him into the Fosh. Fosh kills him, and that is that. Now, this should be game. However, of course, there is still an Object 261 out there. And the Object has a decent reload. It's got some okay speed. And it's got amazing aim. Wait. Fire blind? Oh. Okay, well, as long as we can find him in the next 20 seconds, this is game. If we don't find him in the next 20 seconds, then, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit harder. Because, of course, by now, he will be pretty much reloaded. Uh, by the time we find him, he will definitely be reloaded. And as long as he can turn aim and shotgun, we will have a dead tank. Ooh, we have found him. He is bombing around. He fires. No. Enemy 261 does not get a chance to fire. There was no way he was going to hit that shot. Anyways, as Ronick takes him out for his fourth kill. 2,000 experience with premium without his daily double. That's pretty awesome. As, of course, his ace tanker, fire effect, fighter, spotter, duelist, and bruiser. He get, grabs the confederate and high caliber. Both these well earned. Now, weirdly enough, uh, World Tanks Replays is obviously not working because all of these guys died. But it's only saying that uh, any of them we killed was is the ones who died. So I don't know what's going on on the site, but it is screwing up majorly. Now we got 9,400 damage. <laughs> Over four kills. Yeah, he definitely left a bunch of tanks for his allies to clean up. But obviously a well played game and well worth it. Just over a thousand damage in spotting, so this is effectively ten and a half thousand damage that Ronick has caused in this game. That was beautiful. Great job. Thank you so much, Ronick, for sending this in. And remember, if you want to be a hero just like Ronick in this game, then send me a replay. IOEtherTV at gmail.com and just link to Woot Replays and send me that uh, link. Tell me what is special about the replay. And I will surely play it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. This is IOE throughout.